Okay, I appreciate you guys having us on. Um, you guys make me go after Burton, and he got the prettier slides than me, but uh, I keep it like a chalkboard doing chalk talk with everybody. But I'm going to keep the, um, the, the subject today. Well, first off, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Dan McEwen, defensive coordinator and DB coach at uh, Saginaw Valley State University. My contact stuff here on the screen, so if you want to get with me, I can get you anything you guys need. Um, I'm going to keep it simple and tackle. We're going to talk about our tackling philosophy, the card tackling. Um, I kind of run you down through these four, four things right here as far as tackling philosophy, why we do what we do. Uh, the structure of our defense and the players' angles uh, is also something big that anybody can implement in, in their own system because um, it doesn't necessarily have to be this particular defense. It can be anybody's defense when angles help with tackling. Uh, our tackling technique and then um, kind of our unique way of how we practice tackling. And so we'll run down all these uh, points throughout this, this, uh, this presentation. Um, this is, uh, I think, defensively, this is like our check sheet. And, you know, one thing we see that, like, every single uh, game, you can look at it and run down this list. If we do these four things uh, with our rough, uh, relentless, united, fearless, fast. If we do these four things, we're probably going to be in good positions to, to win a lot of football games. Um, we don't really set goals. We can't. Like, I mean, who just say whatever the offense decides and chooses to do. Uh, we, we can't, you know, dictate on how many, uh, how many times they're going to run the football, how many times they're going to pass the football. Shoot, we could be practicing for a spread all week and they come out in a wing tee. We, we don't have controllables. So we focus on things we can can control. And uh, relentless is just the lie for five. Uh, this all has to do with eventually our tackling, for, tack, uh, our tackling philosophy. Lie for five is just, uh, you know, Urban Meyer and the Ohio State used to kind of say it, you know, from point A to point B with relentless energy from four to six seconds. That's the average player. Let's keep it simple. We cut it to five. That's the mean of that. Lie for five. If you're live, that means you're always on. So that's our relentless attitude, our relentless energy. And we can see that. That's, that's your effort part. Um, United is one of the biggest things and one of the things we worked hard in spring. Unfortunately, like, you know, we obviously don't get to do it. But, it, it, you know, a lot of great things just show up in off season with being United. Um, I mean, you got to speak the same language. And that's imperative. And you see at the end, no synonyms. Um, you can't, man. You can't say two different things or one thing with two different words. Everything has to be the same and unified with our language. So when we're making calls on the field, um, you know, and, uh, and, and just being on page with all the calls and, you know, up front all the way to the back end, it's going to put us in position to, you know, do some good things on the field. Uh, encouragement is one of the biggest things we try to teach our guys is to, you know, being trying to be, you know, young men of empathy. And when we understand when somebody does something great, we want to make sure we encourage. So our language is encouraging. It's not like, come on, bro, come on. Like, actually, we have changed our language to more encouraging uh, tactical words uh, when we're on the field. So, you know, just being united, it's like if we speak tactical, instead of saying, come on, I need more energy, I need more, like, come on, bro. It's, man, we're going to talk more straight to the point. Hey, you need a hound and get to the point with your leaf foot and step in the Madden circle. All that stuff will make sense because we're going over all that. Um, all that will make, you know, it, it just will build us up to be more united. Fearless is straight up on our end. Uh, it's, it's a lot of it. It's not letting these guys be afraid to make mistakes. Let them just be dogs. Let them do what they do. Obstacles, a, a, a true competitor that loves trying to solve problems. So put an obstacle in front of them, and it's fuel for them to do what they do. E is our, uh, it's really our eye alignment uh, assignment technique. And uh, that's kind of like our little key that we do before every pre-snap. And then fast is uh how do we get rid of thinking? We play fast. And that's the hound, the bully from A to B. This is the overall philosophy um, that we have for our defense. And a lot, you know, you got to have philosophy. You got to have your, like, your, your overlying thing that we build off of. And then from there, everything else will kick into, uh, everything else will uh, kick into everything else. So here's our why. We, we do hawk tackling, for sure. Um, and it's because of all these reasons. Hawk tackling, I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, used to it. I will go in depth and explain. We're going to call it card tackling because we're birds, so we're going to use uh, cards instead of hawk. Um, our cardinal tackling system, this first things first, it, it, it does keep the head out of the game. 
one of the biggest objectives that we have as defensive coaches or as a staff is trying to build young men. How do we build young men? We're just trying to get them to become better problem solvers, better thinkers, you know, use their head. Um, you know, I use a lot of times, you know, one of my overall philosophies is to develop better men, M-E-N, my everyday notions, because that's all we are is accumulation of our thoughts. And those are just notions being thoughts acted upon. So, and I'm trying to protect that from, you know, as opposed to having them get heads across as least amount of times as possible, you know, like the old school way, we want to keep the head to the side. Plus, throughout years kind of seeing it, it does make you play faster. And especially with, the, you know, some leverage defenses, you know, the leverage that we play, um, and it just gets these guys rolling to the ball carriers faster. And then the fits in our defense, um, you know, we, we always have a vice. And so with the vice, it's, it's which I'll explain, you know, essentially like a triangle, we're always going to get our leverage points. And they know from whatever coverage or defensive call, whatever we have call, front-wise, whatever it may be, they know where they're going to be according to the ball. And then uh, more importantly, our tackling system, every player can learn how to do it. You know, back in the day, it was all about the guys that were just more than willing than anything that just threw their head into everything and kind of was, you know, reckless. Uh, you don't get those every, you know, just point blank, man. We don't get that. We don't, we don't, we, you know, we live in more of a seven on seven world at times. The, the game itself is evolving away from maybe what uh, some coaches played in. Um, but with, you know, being able to be a leverage side tackling team, we, uh, we can get everybody doing it and keep them safe. That's the most important thing that, you know, we're trying to get out of this. So here's um, philosophy, you know, the, the principle of our defense, no matter where we go, I don't care where you go in the perimeter, into the, into the box, whatever it may be, you'll always have this, you know, the coverages, the fronts to the coverages, everything will coincide with one another to get this in this device. So if a ball carrier, is coming to me, uh, you know, I'm the force guy. We'll have a fill guy, and then we have some type of cutback guy. These can change throughout whatever our, you know, fronts versus coverages are uh, all the time, you know, of who has what. And then if the ball goes away from me, I'm just I'm, I'm the cutback guy, the other guy's the force, and I always have my fill guy. This is huge for our tackling system. And our tackling system is uh, all based off of this, and along with those other, you know, elements that we talked about so here's a perfect picture um that is our vice and you know at the end of the day if we feel like if we can get this every single place you know whether they move it to the perimeter to the outside uh to the inside off the edge whatever it is we have everybody set up in this defense so the biggest thing about our tackling and let me just get back to you know kind of rewind a little there's like three universals that we'll talk about no matter where we go there's three universals in football the field's always going to be the same, no matter what. The dimensions are going to be the same, period. And our footwork has to always be the same because that's just bowel mechanics. And at the end of the day, it kind of goes back into footwork. Tackling is just a, it's what you do in football. So, you know, one of the biggest things, what I found, what our coaching staff has found is, you know, I mean, this is just simple but effective. Um, whatever you put emphasis on, they're going to do. The players so whatever you put emphasis on they're going to do here's the crazy part i know defensively we're trying to do two things tackle and take the ball away and cover we we, we locking up we're covering so those three things cover tackle go get the ball uh those are like just that's what you do on defense and so like for not to put emphasis on tackling which is what you do as a defensive player is kind of crazy but I will say this, tackling is a skill and needs to be developed. So that's what I'm trying to give out here today, kind of give you like an overall system of what we do and then show you technique things. But this is an example of vice. Um, I'm going to try to make sure I see this plane. So um, right here, if you kind of follow my arrows, you're going to get the vice fit off of this, uh, off our play. So right there, we get another form of vice. And uh, I'll... Uh, Try to play this again so everybody can kind of see. So boom, and I'm hoping this is playing because I try to put on PowerPoint because I know sometimes get a little lag in the videos. But um, I mean, it's the same thing. We're always gonna have a a vice fit, uh, you know, as far as the fourth, the force, the cut back, and the fill. So you know, if we can always get three to the ball carrier somehow, some way, it's always gonna work. And that's our philosophy. We try to segment and section the game in all these pieces. And that's uh, that's that's kind of how we go from there.
Um, same, same video. Okay, next play. We're going to have another vice fit. So uh, I do know it's going to happen over here. So you guys will kind of follow the ball. So our whole objective, and that, that picture should show you a pretty clean right there. And it was kind of the first picture that I showed you with the triangle, the vice. Every single one of these guys does have like their leverage. So they know like where they come from, that's the shoulder I'll be tackling with. Do, do guys get out of position? Yes, they do. Do guys, you know, overplay in some, yes. But you know, that's where we work hard. We probably work harder on how to get there than actually finishing and following through with the, the, the you know, the actual skill of tackling. Not to say that we don't do that because that's the game. And we worked, we, work, we basically say, if you can get your body in position, the rest will naturally fall in order. So. That is a, excuse me, that is the, um, that's the idea of what our vice is. So our tackling philosophy is, you know, here's what it is. Tackling is all about attitude. Our car tackling, we are leverage tackling football team. We tackle with our head from our leverage side. So if I was to come from the left, let's just simple. If I'm coming from the left side of the field, I'm going to make right shoulder tackles. And with that said, that means my head stays on the same side of from where I'm coming from. And so these pictures should show you a good idea. Like this is all uh, Seahawks stuff right here. So picture number one shows you, that's, that's Earl Thomas right there, shows you where he's coming from, okay? With the lead foot up, his head will be on that side where he's coming from the left side of the field. He's gonna make a right shoulder tackle. His head will never go across the body. The only way the ball goes, you know, his head will go across the body. If the defender kept running to his side, then it looks like his head's across the body. But we simplify this by saying, hey, wherever you come from, my head stays on that side and I tackle with that shoulder. This makes guys play so fast and keeps things so easy. So these are like the four things we constantly are assessing. And so, you know, we can reverse engineer it strip it down and then we try to segment different parts of the tackle because it's one of the things like how do you how do you practice tackling without actually doing it because we all know it's let's take a toll toll on the body at times well there's a lot of things we do so every single one of these things we work on you know individually and then a lot of times you know you know when you get into scrimmage situations eventually in the game all of these are going to show up into your game and this is what you got to be great at so the first thing we talk about is hound and i will go over every single one of these but Hound is from me to the ball carrier. I'm, my eyes are focused on the tar target, which is tracking. Uh, I talk like a sniper. I'm so fixated on it. That's the only thing I see. I'm getting from point A to point B as quick as possible. And I'm going to show you some things on Hound because, you know, especially like DBs in our defense, if they can just fly and get to the leverage, I don't even like, you know, I got to a point where like we're not even worried about like if they make the tackle. Because naturally what's going to happen is if they get from point A to point B as quick as possible from their leverage side, that ball carrier is either going to cut back or jump cut, try to bounce around them. And by then, the rest of our defense, how everything flows, is the tackle is going to be made. Um, I want to try to give everybody buzzwords because I think language is so imperative in like how we do things. So like if you look at uh, section number two, <clears throat> we hound. So we're tracking the hip, we're hounding, getting from point A to point B. Our whole objective is to run as fast as possible, get there as quick as possible from the ball carrier, get my lead foot up, which is the same foot, same shoulder, foot up to the ball carrier, and we're trying to put our foot into the Madden circle. That's our aim point. What is the Madden circle? I try to get away from giving them um, uh, uh, distances and heights and measurements because at the end of the day if I told everybody to show me what two feet looks like with their hands everybody's going to be different because that's just their perception all right um so when I say Madden circle I think all these kids got a concept of what a Madden circle is typically it's probably going to be a yard radius around the ball carrier but all we're saying is missed tackles happen when my foot is not in the Madden circle I'm diving and I'm whiffing but if my foot gets to the Madden circle, I, I like you're probably going to make that play. And I'm going to show you an example of like how this happens uh, with some game film. So, uh, you know, my whole, my whole goal is to get from point A to point B, hound, get to the Madden circle, and now come to balance, okay, to get the foot in the Madden circle. Some, we don't. We don't, uh, uh, we actually praise when you hound. Even if you miss a tackle, we praise it because that's all we care about. Um, 
I used to do like tackle efficiency charts and like, you know, focus on the negative, like, oh, you missed this many tackles and your tackle efficiency is this. But we're trying to get these dogs out there to just do what they do and just fly around. And the more you can praise them and make things into games, the more fun they're going to have and the more they're going to be able to do better things. So but talk about the Madden circle. Um, we get the leave foot in there. So like we always say, if you break down, you get broke off. If you break down, you get broke off. Our whole goal is to get the Madden circle as quick as possible, then come to balance, meaning come to balance is our definition of getting the lead foot into the Madden circle. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you're sure you're going to kind of, you know, you might stutter, weave, take angles as you're getting, as you're hounding. But at the end of the day, um, that's all we're trying to do. Then, uh, you know, Madden circle, once I get that lead foot in there, that's my power foot. I'll explain what that is here in a second, you know, throughout this presentation. And eyes through thighs, eyes through thighs, where that's what we're looking at. You know, this is this is pretty standard what a lot of people teach, you know, with the hawk tackling. Eyes on the target, uh, come to balance really is I'm just leading up, getting my near foot into the Madden circle. And then from there I want to make shoulder contact. And this is this is another thing we're really looking into. We haven't got to do it, you know, as opposed to palms up. We're talking about, you know palms neutral meaning facing each other because at the end of the day that's usually how I'm going to get my shoulder into my target um palms up means I got chest into it I want shoulder into the target and it's a whole nother little technique that you know each one of these for sure has different little things that we work on but you know just like everybody else man we have limited time and got to get straight to the point wrap and squeeze self-explanatory I mean we we call squeeze shutting off the engine if you can squeeze knees, there's no power from the side. And here's the deal. Most tackles, actually, I'm going to take this back. Almost every single tackle is going to come from some type of angle. And I'll show you on the next page. Um, it's going to have some type of angle. Like very rarely are tackles just going head on with somebody because this is not how defense works. Things move. Um, and we're always coming from some type of leverage. That's what we mean. Angles are it. Leverage is our angles. All right, so drive for five is the last part. We focus on all these things and practice them. So here's how there's only two different types of tackling angles. So you're either coming from outside in, which is this. And if you look on that little gray spot, if I'm coming from outside in, so from here I'm on the left going to the right, the blue guy represents the ball carrier. Um, here's the potential forms of tackling that we'll do with this type of individual. So like sweep tackles would be, I'm, I'm throwing my shoulders into his ankles. That's the sweep tackle for us. Hawk means everything I just said. We're getting to the Madden circle and, and going in from there. Very rarely, you know, our, our DB's putting a lot of profile tackles, meaning coming more head on from off to an angle, but it does happen. So we practice it and it happens on screens. And, you know, sometimes things bounce out on closed ends and DB's getting put in that position. But, um, you know, inside the box will work more profile tackles, and I'll explain more what those are when we get on the, the other uh, angle from it. But these are different angles. So we work outside in on tackling, and everybody can work outside in, even, even guys in the box. So when we practice things, tackling, all we do is work from outside in and inside out, and everybody works their different techniques within it because even D linemen uh, on certain scenarios are going to be closing ground if they're chasing backside on certain plays. So here would be an example um, of outside in tackling. And if you watch number three down on the bottom, uh, the field corner, he is uh, gonna give you a great idea about how you guys can see, boom, ball thrown. Here he is in full speed. He didn't break down, he didn't lose contain. And contain, he didn't, I should say, he didn't lose his leverage. So, like, this is awesome to me because there's a couple things going on in this picture. Even if I pause this thing, this is, you know, two guys on one tack. I get advice like we talked about, but essentially we're getting two on one right here. And, you know, for us, this is a win. I mean, that's, this is, this is awesome. And a lot of times, uh, you know, if you look, you're going to find when you freeze frame pitchers that do good job tackling, they're going to have that, that, that. So for him, it'd be the right foot in the Madden circle before he made contact with his right uh, shoulder. So this is also called compress. We work this all day long with a lot of people and compress can happen when you just come from two different angles. You're like the, you're like the, the end pieces of that triangle and the vice coming and converging together on the ball carrier. So I'll play this one, one more time. Uh, just, just, 
you know, kind of showing you the hustle. And then, you know, I kind of show you later, if, as long as you're fast, I promise you, like, even if this guy missed, look how many guys are coming to the ball. And I, I don't care. It's not our defense. It's all defenses. Everybody has a structure of everybody flying to the football. Get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. That's that's our mentality. And so this one would be an outside in, just an example for, you know, where you're coming from. And then, of course, I mean, it's everything we're going to show you is going to have the two ways because now you're going to see an inside out. A lot of times inside outs will have a little bit more of the profile fits um, just because you'll get a little bit more downhill. But here's kind of, you know, how it works. Um, typically, you're not getting sweep tackles when you're inside out. Sweep tackles will happen when you're outside in. That would be the only differences between these, you know, from, from that. So here's some examples. Um, I marked it off. So number 22, which is the safety right here, he's going to be working himself inside out of a tackle. So you'll see how the structure kind of works. You'll, you'll eventually be able to point out a lot of times the vice and how everything fits. But there's his inside out. So you're going to see since he's inside out, he's coming from his leverage side, he will make a right shoulder tackle. Now, of course, things move. It's never perfect because guys are allowed to move in this game. But you can kind of see, too, there's your vice fits. So the thing I praise for all these guys, man, you're going to hear me over and over is hound. Hound, hound, hound. Watch 22 again, and all I care about is get to the dang ball. As fast as you can, eventually get your lead foot up, and then there you go. So that's another example uh, inside out. Here's another example inside out. Here would be, you know, true inside the box type play. Watch number 30, our backer right here, who's playing the mug position. Um, he's going to, you know, work his inside out. So right now, if I pause this and show you guys, you already know you can expect that it's going to be a right shoulder tackle. Or it should be because that's his aim point. And that's great because the structure of the defense, let it bounce, 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 let it, you know, push it back into your, your outside guys. You know, nothing's ever perfect because, you know, sometimes we want to actually condense that more with our edge guy. But you see how guys fold over top of one another. I'm not sure one more time. This is this is going to be an inside out tackle. These are the, the these are it. These are it. Now it's just a matter of what angle the ball carrier comes from. This is all we work on. And again, notice heads want to cross bodies. They're all coming from their leverage side. So here's how if I can give one thing away from this, this is like the best thing that's ever happened to us. And um. You know, it's exciting for us because, you know, when, when Coach Brady took over, we're all kind of new together, working together. So last year was our first year coming together. Language is still coming together. And that's what we're excited for about the season, still optimistic through everything going on that, you know, everything will work out. Um, but this is real simple. A to B. A is the defender. The ball carrier is obviously the ball carrier. Our whole objective when we hound and a lot, of, a lot of stuff we work with is, you know, the working breed. We, you know, we talk about the working breed is just a, uh, it's a high energy, very intrinsically motivated dog. And when you hound, you can imagine that, you know, you see videos of uh, uh, cop dogs or protection jogs, you know, chasing down people or protecting. When they close space, there's no hesitations. And it's actually like what animals can teach us, man is the most amazing thing because they are the best trackers. They don't waste energy. They get from point A to point B as quick as possible to go take down what their mission is supposed to do. So this is how from point A to point B, we're trying to get there as quick as possible. So I'm going to show you two clips of missed tackles, two clips that were both on third downs. Uh, and because that we were full speed, the play was made when we got off the field, even though it's a missed tackle, we praise the guy who got there because he's the one that let the thing happen. So in this case, it's number one. He's the safety right here to the field. You'll watch him on, as the play goes on. Man, he flies to the football. You know, you'll see, you'll see the little combos kind of give us that little triangle concept with the under route. You know, a lot of people obviously have that. But if I get back to this picture, because he's full speed, and it's, it's, look, look what I told you. If he's full speed, what does the guy have to do? The guy has to stop his momentum, which look what happened with the next guy. And the crazy part is when you start doing this, instead of them like missing a tackle and thinking about it, we don't, we don't like, if, if we're not talking about missed tackles. We're talking about did you hound? That is our emphasis. Our whole mindset has shifted from making the tackle versus did you hound? Did you get to the play? Because if you get to there, then great things are going to happen. 
And, and you know, nothing's ever perfect. And sometimes we got to realize that because like I told you guys, man, I started getting into tackle efficiencies and doing percentages of what your hit rate is. It's almost like fantasy football stuff, right? Uh, and then I realized all it is is just putting emphasis on the negativity of some things and not letting these guys be fearless. So now for them to sit there and go, I'm not – like, it's almost like you take the fear out and they become even better because it's more joy of getting the ball. This little Zoom call with her. So here is – one more time, full speed, boom, and here's the sweet part. Notice that guy that made the, that that missed the tackle. Watch how quick he gets back up, and you'll see another play with it. I'll give it to you one more time. Safety comes flying up, full speed, eyes, eyes, boom. You, you know what I mean? And then his buddy did the same thing. And the buddy, you know, once I start talking all these techniques, even his buddy, uh, number three, he wraps, squeeze, rolls, and, you know, clearly there's a different size of those guys, but, you know, he brings them to the ground. So that is okay. Uh, same play. In this play, we're going to look at the corner down here. Everything kind of pushes out to the perimeter. It's like a cracker place concept. So watch number three down to the uh, field. Um, I'm going to let it play, and you're going to see he's full speed. Hound, 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 boom. Yes, yes. Get back up. He still makes the play. But I praise him for that because if you guys watch the structure, look how, if I told you, as long as you hound, as long as you get to your leverage point, there's going to be great things that happen, right? I'm not worried about the missed tackle. Look at you. If anything, we might have a better play when he missed the tackle because he gets bounced back. So I'll play it one more time because, I mean, to me, this is stuff I go crazy over. Look, hound, 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 get to the hip, get to the hip, boom. Yes, sir. Okay, boom. My buddy's got you. And then look at the whole defense right there. So that is okay. We praise that stuff. Because at the end of the day, do your math. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's a good play. Uh, I don't know, you know, how many yards it gained off that. But here we go one more time. And I'll get to the next clip. Here we go, Hound. Yes, sir. And then notice how both players that missed the tackle got right back up because they're not thinking, oh, crap, oh, dang, oh. No, they get back up because the whole objective is get the ball, get the ball. We hound it. All right, so here's some good plays. It's, they're all great plays, but here's some ones that actually, you know, make the play in space. So, you know, a lot of times you get set up with these one-on-one -on -one matchups and, you know, you sometimes, you know, certain coverages have their, their little holes in it. But we're watching number one, jersey number one, uh, to the field. And then you're just going to watch him on a, uh, you know, in a little out route where he plays his technique, drives it, doesn't, you know, the one thing I want you to notice about him is his eyes. Um, I tell DBs all the time, if you ask, if you come in my room and I tell the DBs, what's a, what's a good tackle? They're going to tell you any tackle. What's a good tackle? Any tackle. Anything that gets the player to the ground, we live another day. So at the end of the day, boom, watch his eyes. Eyes through thighs, eyes to his target. You know, we teach these guys, too, on something like this. We're aiming outside to push them back inside. They know their leverage points because if you can see right there in this picture that we got paused, there's three defenders coming my way. Then, you know, once we break everything down, if you guys, like, watch full speed, if I can try to pause it up, but you're going to find where that, you know, where he gets the Madden circle. I'm going to try to get it where, you know, Madden circle right there. And then wrap, squeeze, turn, twist, do whatever I got to do, bring this dude down to the ground. And then there it is. Live another play. So I'll give it one more, one more play, and then we'll get to the next one. So this is the great job, hound, 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 hound. That's what we focus on. That's what we focus on. Notice he didn't stop his feet and start, start uh, uh, chopping his feet. Okay, this one, middle linebacker, number 44 on a screenplay. All you're going to see is our baby read his keys, do his thing, and then full speed, doesn't break down, just go straight through the guy. Read his keys, boom, not even thinking, let's go. Great play. Like, like man, this stuff already give me, like, uh, I know you guys all been there before. You see you guys make great plays, things that, you know, you practice and work on and, you know, uh, you got to give them tools like um, that we'll be able to incorporate in all situations. So we work so much on universals. And again, are you an inside out or outside in tackler? That's the structure of our defense. But there you go. There's our hound. And I mean, the beautiful thing is, here's my thing is, because I will not lie to you, this running back's pretty good. He was at Tiffin, he, you know, uh, he might have been the best one we saw a year. And I mean, he went off the rest of the year. We don't want this guy catching the ball and gaining ground. So if our whole thing is if you can get there before he can turn up field, man, we're going to win. And, and we knew we had to do that with this guy. 
And then there you go. Great play. All right, here's one more hound clip. So in this case, we're going to watch number 22, the safety right here. You're going to see action go to the boundary. All you got to do is just watch 22. He reads his keys. He's going to hound. He gets praised for this. Hound. Get the ball, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. Boom. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, we're talking, what, third and one, third and two from the safety spot, all because he hounded and let the defense work itself out naturally. There we go. And then you can kind of see the natural vice with the corner getting off and then everybody's in that position. But one more time with that hound, close space. That's all we're praising. We're praising him off that. Even if he didn't make that play, I'm praising him off that. But, you know, the sweet part is, I mean, what I tell you, if you hound, you're going to be able to make good plays. <clears throat> All right, tackling, Madden circle. We kind of explained that. But all we're trying to do, because it's very, it's, it's very, very hard to give aim points to a moving, shifty, runner back, receiver, whatever it may be, quarterback. So all we try to tell them is get your lead foot in the Madden circle. For So instance, in this little picture in Madden, that lead foot for this guy, you know, his, his lead foot would be the right foot. That's why we got that one down. I want to make a right shoulder tackle so I have my right foot gets into the Madden circle. As soon as my foot can be in the Madden circle is when my shoulder will be able to hit him. I can generate power. I'm in the proximity that I can be able to, uh, with, you know, hold, grab, do whatever I got to do, wrap, squeeze, and this is where we're going to make for sure tackles. Um, we talk about power foot. You play baseball, um, you know, if you're swinging the bat, you put a foot into the ground to generate power you always got to have a power foot into the ground. When you see guys maybe get ran over, it's because their lead foot was behind them or they're like diving and they don't have any solid ground. They don't make contact with the ground in order to drive the energy upward for them to be able to generate power through a running player. So this is another thing we use, Madden Circle. They know what we're talking about. So our guys know that on my whole objective, whether I'm inside out or outside in, I run as fast as I can, I hound and get my lead foot into the Madden Circle. Obviously, this is great because I think every single one of these kids plays Madden, so we're on point with this. All right, this one's sweet. You don't really see them in the picture. This actually was our first play of the year, first defensive snap of the year, and you'll see it's, you know, a little, uh, you know, one of those uh, unbalanced screens and comes out, and right now I'm pausing it. You're going to see our perimeter guy, you know, obviously black destructs another big thing we work on but there you go and you're going to see power generated because he gets his foot down you know into the madden circle i mean it's maybe a little bit off but you can see his right foot and then obviously he's holding his ground and here's what happens man if the if the guy was if the guy kept coming towards him the ball carrier at this point our guy with the right foot down is going to have enough power and leverage to be able to make the play look where his head's on you know this side but because he's getting away from him and cutting back, even though it might look like, oh, he's, he's lunging because he's not in the Madden circle. Remember I said, if they bounce or cut back, we're going to be okay because, look, he got his buddies coming from the inside-out position. But phenomenal play, uh, getting through the blockers, and then there you go. I mean, you can see that's, that's the stuff that – this is football. This is what we do. And the sweet thing about this is, man, I want these guys – I don't want their head shook. I don't, I want them playing the next play. You know what I mean? Like that's what we want out of these guys. Um, the next thing we talk about, so we talk about closing space hound. We talk about eventually coming to balance, meaning get my lead foot into the picture to make a tackle. Now, what do we do with cats like this? Obviously this is probably the, the, the one guy we don't want to see in open field. Um, hence that picture on the left. But I kind of wanted to show you guys things. When knees are driving, power's generated. Some of these cats squat a lot of weight. Some of these cats generally uh, generate a lot of power forward and back, or I should say more so forward. But once they start going side to side, that's what a defense should be able to be, you know what I mean? Make people go side to side. That's what at least what ours is. But when you're leverage tackling team, the play on the left, which I know he's an open field, the play on the left is, you know, he's got all his energy and power that, you know, he's got momentum going. We don't want guys like that to have momentum. So we talk about wrap and squeeze at the point of contact to stop knee drive. So when we say shut off the engine, we're talking about basically making his knees collapse. Now, we're not talking about hurting anybody. We're talking just straight up bioscience, okay? So here's what I mean. 
if your knees collapse inward, like guys aren't strong doing ad and abducting workouts. They're strong going up, down, forward, okay? That's where all the power is. That's where the hip drive is. You don't have the hip drive from side to side. So if we can get to the point, like the picture on the right, if we can get our leverage, so for instance, if I'm that guy on the right picture, you know, coming from my leverage, you know, from outside in from the left, all I have to do is grab one knee, grab it. I might not, hey, this dude's probably so big. Well, he is that big. That's why I'm using him as a picture. You're not going to be able to grab both knees and shut off his engine. But I'm going to grab one knee, wrap, squeeze, and roll. And I promise you, he's going to follow and he's down. Remember I said, any tackle is a good tackle. So, like, guys like this, we're not asking a guy to bring them up high. In the picture on the right, this is a pretty good picture to show you guys that, that, that Patriots defender, we want him to make a tackle with the left shoulder, head on that side. All I have to do is grab around that knee, ankle, do whatever I got to do, and just turn. If you don't have if, – if you're playing a guy where his thighs are bigger than our arms, we, we're probably in trouble. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I don't know how – many guys out there like this but this is about as a as a freak and an anomaly there is out there with a uh, what uh henry out there with the titans so this will give you a great example of drive for five so we're gonna watch the middle backer right here or i'm gonna i'm sorry this is a shut off the engine so this is when we wrap squeeze we stop his knee drive stop his knee drive there he goes he has no more momentum so if i bring that boy back so he's, you can see he came from his leverage. Remember that. He has his foot down, Madden circle. His head is on the leverage side where he came from. Wrap squeeze. In this case, you know, we're not talking about necessarily Derrick Henry in this picture. But, you know, we got a pretty athletic guy running around. Um, there you go. Wrap squeeze. Look how the guy's momentum stopped because if I pause for a split second, you can kind of see the knees go inward. He stopped the forward knee drive. There we go. There it is. Play one more time. And so this is uh, shutting off the engine. And this is, this is, this is great tackling. He's, he's down to the ground. That's, that's all we're asking for. Any tackle is a good tackle. Okay. Same picture. Now here's what we're going to look at. You know, sometimes we're putting, you know, sometimes things happen where, you know, it's not necessarily at the line of scrimmage. But here you go. Here's, a, here's the safety. And he's going to be pursuing the edge, we get a little, let it bounce outside, but there you go. At that point, if you see the angle he came from, he's not trying to take a guy up high. Watch how he shuts off the engine by basically collapsing the knees right there. And we're not talking about hurting anybody because we're all strength and, you know, we build ourselves up. We're not talking about taking knees out. We're talking about making the knees collapse. My thing is, if you don't, then you're going to have the, 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 the bad end of it because if the knees are still going forward, and all that momentum is going forward. That's probably going to hurt us. And so now we're – and look, everybody gets up safe, running back and everybody, because naturally when I say collapse the knees, the running back will fold and everybody's healthy, gets back up, let's play football. You know what I mean? Next play. We, that, that's, that's all our whole objective is. We're not trying to hurt anybody. We're just trying to be the best competitors out there. So that is shutting off the engine. One more time. Shutting off the engine. All right. Drive for five. This is like when I make contact. It's like the last part. We, we segment these things in practice and work all these elements, and it's just like the best thing in the world when it shows up. It's the corner up top right here, all right? So, you know, tackling happens anywhere and everywhere. So, okay, the guy catches the ball. Watch how he keeps driving his feet, driving his feet, driving his feet, and that's, that's our drive for five. Now, we work this type of stuff. We work so many different ways, and it's – it's fun. I'll show you kind of how we do this, about how we can uh, get maximum reps in practice. So here you go. Here's your tackle. You know, at the end of the day, you know, don't drop to your knees short, you know what I mean? But wrap and squeeze, look, he really, what did we just talk about? Wrap and squeeze one leg. Then my buddy helps me. Look at all my defenders coming. And then I got to get back up and then watch how he just keeps finishing, pumping his legs, getting back up, getting back up. And then there you go. Perfect. We'll play it one more time, full speed, and then move on to the next thing. There it is, draft for five. All right, this is what we do that's probably a little bit more unique out there. And I mean, it's, it's a lot of people, hey, hey, trust me, you brought it to Saginaw and there's a lot of people, okay, this is how you do tackling? Here's what we do. We set up five to six stations. 
And the sweet part about this is we do tackle circuits and we do these every single day. We actually make circuits out of turnover circuits, out of block destruct circuits. And here's why. We get more reps doing tackle circuits than we would with individual things. Now, don't get me wrong. There's going to be a lot of individual work worked within some certain things like linebackers all day got their certain things we do and, and DBs work their certain things. But here's the sweet part. We will work things, for instance, a sad D-line coach, Coach Lynch. He works sweep tackle with guys every single day. He's an expert at it. That's what that's his expertise right now. Sweep tackle. We'll get, you know, one of our outside backer coach slash DB coach, Coach Mack, working leverage. He'll be the expert at that. He coaches these guys up every single day on that one particular thing. If I take Hound and Coach Pruholm take Compress and so on and so on and so on, we all own, each coach has a station that we own. Here's how this works. You start at different stations and we got our system where we kind of, you know, it takes a minute to get everything organized in the beginning. But once you get this thing flowing in your organization, it's, it's man, it's clockwork. And matter of fact, we always travel that way in that picture because we want it clockwork and we do work each side of the foot. So I'll show you what we mean. Start with the sweep. We work sweep tackles. We set up the drill. The guy goes, you know, we get straight to the point of sweep tackle. We might even have them on the ground on the knees just working on their aim points into a pad. Uh, with their shoulders, they get up and lightly jog to the next station. Our whole goal is continuous movement throughout the whole circuit. Whole, that, that, that's what it is. And then you get up to the next thing, there might be cones set up, and then we work our leverage drill. Then we work hound. And yes, we split it up for big guys, short guys. Sometimes we use partners. And then I do, I'll show you examples once we get into this. I'll show you kind of some of these things. But this tackle circuit, when we started doing the math, in seven minutes, we can get anywhere from like 30 to 35 reps of efficient tackling, straight, deliberate tackling. So like that to us, that's a win. That's, that's the thing about that, 35 reps for each player in seven minutes. And it's, they're getting like deliberate reps. Here's the issue in a lot of times, and you know, we have it where we don't have the manpower for, for people to wipe off the field and get his equipment after every period. So Instead of like, for instance, me working with the DBs and trying to get a profile tackle, sweep tackle, leverage tackle, a hound, I don't have enough time in practice to go back and forth with equipment. So now this time in the circuit, A, you get more reps, B, everybody's an expert. And then the other part that's huge is your, all your equipment's already out there at one time. So you're working it one time. As you saw in previous clips, all that tackling in our first year came from nothing but circuits like this. And that's what we do every day. And, uh, you know, of course, whatever we need to put more emphasis on, we will, you know, you know, we'll, we'll make sure we do. But a lot of time, and, and we, we make it so it's very, like, it's not monotonous because sometimes our profile will switch it up. So profile, we might add a shock and then profile. We might add it straight to the point of just wrapping up with the head to the side. Sweep, we might just come from different angles. Sweep, we might roll, get there. Leverage, you know, we're working on just getting to a point and then lead foot in the Madden circle. A lot of times, drills like a leverage, all we're trying to do is maybe we're facing away, whistle blown, turn around and run, you know, towards the coach and get your foot in the Madden circle, boom, onto the next station, get the hound. And so we work this stuff all the day, whether it's bags, um, and I'll show you kind of the example, but it's actually the wrong way where I was going clockwise. We do the same thing, bully, get the ball, get the ball. When we say bully, that means take away. So we'll do the same thing with like circuits like this. So I'm going to uh, get to a couple clips in our, uh, our huddle real quick. This is going to give you an idea. Now, now, I will say this. It is way more efficient than what you're seeing. You won't see guys sitting around. This is actually like one of the first days of fall camp. This is all we had on film. So I'm trying to give you examples of like what we work. You can see it's, we, we don't got pads on yet. So this is like camp day and a lot of things. This is, like, like I said, this is, you know, this is so cleaned up. Like I wish I could add spring clips for you guys, but I mean, this is like our third day in camp and here's how it works. You, you, you know, you set up a coach to each station. This is just something as simple as this, like without pads, it's just working our footwork. Now, of course we can pinpoint all these things that, you know, we're trying to get better at. So like this would be profile. And all we're doing is straight up learning how to come from a side, keep my head on that side, and, and we shouldn't cross face on that. But again, this is from camp. Here's our hound drill. So all we're doing is closing space from A to B. And what these guys do, it's almost like you're following somebody around in the circuit. 
here we're just straight to the point. So there's little things like we don't want our hands down into it. We want to have palms neutral and, and as we're grabbing. And, um, we, you know, we're working the part of the hawk tackle. Here we're just working on getting my lead foot to the Madden circle, working on boom, and then, you know, coming up the balance to get my foot into the Madden circle. This one uh, eventually we fixed down the road. This is more of a sweep. And all we're trying to do is aim our shoulders into the ankles, and that's a sweep tackle. And so this is how our tackle circuit works. And we'll get this, you know, we might start off with 10 minutes. And we do this every, like, at least twice a week during season. In the spring, this would have been happening every single day. So, like, you will see different things. Like, bigger dudes work on different distances, different uh, depths. And then, like, you know, of course, this is to the point where you're seeing, like, hey, get the lead foot up because my foot's in the mass. So I'm getting straight to the point. We segment things down straight to the point, you know, and then continuously work on it. And, uh, you know, as the season went on, we got better and better with a lot of these things. Um, some of these, like I said, uh, uh, you know, this is our first day. This had to been first couple of days because it's marked on ball camp. This is all we have from the circuit. But I wish I had the video to show you guys the whole thing in process and how it works, how, you know, they're jogging to the next one because we're not – we're not here. It's not a conditioning thing. It's a skill thing. Tackling is a skill. I, I can, nobody can't tell me otherwise. Just like DB's skill set is to cover, receivers work on route runnings, quarterbacks with throwing motions, linemen work on their pass pros versus, you know, run blocking. We have to work tackling. It's a skill. Skill means it's acquired. Skill means work plus talent equals skill. And the more we do this, the more it's hardwired to us. And I think that might be I think that's kind of it with that so um that is uh that's kind of what we let me see stop share that was to give you guys an idea of what we do um that that is the that's what we're talking about today the first page I had for you guys had all that information um and if anybody wants to reach out I'm always open uh again appreciate everybody you know allowing Saginaw Valley to speak to you guys and Anything we can do, man, we're, we're here to help. Um, you know, we're here to help everybody. I mean, it's, I don't know why we think things are such a big secret or, or you know, like, it's football, man. It's, it's what we do. It's fun. It's, it's what taught us a lot of great things. And, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we all connect. And hopefully sooner than later, this is, uh, you know, it's not just from, you know, Zoom meetings and, and all these things. We get to get to bed, you know, get back together and have fun again. So. Um, I appreciate your guys' time. Is that, uh, I think we're good.